Hello everyone and uh, it's really wonderful feeling being here and also delightful uh, for the major reason being that uh, I see a lot of people sharing the same ideas uh, headed towards same direction and uh, that's quite interesting and give me a lot of motivation to move forward. Uh, about me, uh, I'm Dilip uh, from India and based in Stockholm, a core member of JSPM, uh, JavaScript Package Manager and Currently trying to found a company uh, called Logum. Uh, on the internet, I can be found as uh, username Fusion Strings. And uh, the agenda today uh, is we are going to talk about uh, import map, what they are, and what are the challenges uh, in oh, web development in general, but particularly for front end development. What are the uh, pressing issues? Uh, how JSPM? Uh, has already addressed those challenges and how plans to do them in future and what is Lagom, what it is uh, set up to do and conclusion basically what next. So before we begin I think it is important to get in right frame of mindset uh, and that uh, brings uh, me to this vague but interesting initial proposal which Tim Berners-Lee uh, proposed in his Lee uh, he proposed uh, initial draft of uh, web to be. Uh, that also gave birth to uh, HTML, a uh, kind of origin story of HTML begins there. But on wide uh, or bird eye view, it also gives a kind of a lightweight platform for people to build and share information and abstract away a lot of complications uh, from setting up server or how uh, uh, do something. But not that is not just enough. Uh, it is mainly information management uh, concept. That means how we share information by linking one piece of data to another piece. Having said that, let's jump in. What are import maps? So basically these are uh, import maps are new web standards and recently became available in all major browsers uh, of um, out of the box support. And uh, we one way to imagine about import maps is that these are native web native package.json. Uh, package.json is something which we use in Node.js to manage dependencies to pull in from NPM uh, or any other similar uh, public registries to fetch uh, JavaScript dependencies to build front-end uh, applications for the web. And how import maps work is that we can imagine them as a plain JSON objects. Uh, key is any uh, module identifier, specifier, and the value is any resolve, uh, resolvable URL for those modules. Uh, and then how do we use import maps, but before we proceed, we need to compare them how we build uh, for front-end or web in general today. So as we see, it is kind of continuous cycle between fetching your source code, building on local, pushing, and again, rebuilding uh, for preview. Then once again, rebuilding again for production. That means every time we make a change, we have to rebuild. Every time we make that application available to a new environment, we have to rebuild. And the root cause behind that is like, uh, because we need to use uh, NPM and Node.js, which is primarily a, a backend or a server side uh, solution. And there is a lack of web native solution which can run in browser in general. So uh, we plan to get rid of both of them, hopefully someday. Uh, and about JSPM, what is the context here? Uh, JSPM is a JavaScript package manager, has been around for quite some time, uh, lesser known, but still uh, it has a niche uh, user base. Uh, it has pivoted uh, quite a lot of time, uh, but in current shape and form, it is uh, basically a organization, a foundation, uh, where we are set out to support front-end development, uh, to be precise, standard compliant uh, front-end development, by creating toolings which are missing in the landscape of uh, users for several reasons. Uh, one being standards are also picking up a lot of speed. Uh, a lot of new standards are getting uh, into, into the specs and uh, there are no uh, concrete implementations for them. So there is a, a hard need of uh, having some kind of tooling or ecosystem which can support web or browser native tooling that web uh, JSPM does. And uh, it does it by providing 
a CDN, uh, which can uh, kind of fetch dependencies, pre-built dependencies from NPM and make it available in the browser using uh, different different kind of solutions. Uh, it has a JSPM library, uh, HTTP API, and a CLI as well. Using that, uh, we can kind of generate uh, uh, dependencies for any front-end applications. It also has the ability to parse HTML as an input and then generate another HTML which has all the dependencies uh, scanned and injected. This is one example, uh, and uh, uh, using this uh, keyword code, we can go to the live page where we can kind of play around with this work in progress sandbox box, uh, generator. Uh, here we can see we have uh, uh, some uh, code, but uh, uh, there is no uh, reference to from where it can fetch these dependencies. And uh, using JSPM generator, we can see that it has uh, generated uh, automatically the import map and also added them in including integrity hash in into the app, um, HTML and this is ready to be deployed immediately, instantly. Uh, how it works? Uh, it works by using say JSPM CLI, one option to do it, uh, by providing simple uh, and very memorable uh, options, uh, just uh, using uh, command line, and uh, there are a lot of variations, uh, probably uh, heading towards <laughs> docs is a good idea. Uh, and when we run this previous command, here we are, uh, basically what we are doing is that pointing JSPM to, towards one uh, kind of skeleton app.html, uh, app and then installing lit, which is a uh, front-end development library, and we want the output to comply with environment browser and production. There are several other options available, like uh, Dino and uh, uh, development environment, for example. And it will generate this kind of uh, HTML, where we can see that even though we just uh, mentioned lit, but it scanned all the sub-dependencies, inlined them using one short URL. That means no more uh, heavy node modules on your system. Then, how it works currently? So when any publisher publishes their uh, JavaScript packages to NPM, public registry. Then JSPM Builder, which is a uh, code base which runs uh, in, on, on Google Cloud, it watches the NPM uh, couch base and immediately builds uh, using uh, rollup. Basically, it is the same process which every developer does with every change, but it needs to be done only once if we think about it. So that is what precisely uh, JSPM does and then uploads it to uh, JSPM CDN. And through that, it is available. Then what is the context of <laughs> IPFS here? Because we seem to have solved the problem. Uh, because IPFS, even though uh, kind of tries to solve a lot of problem for decentralized world, but somehow when it comes to front-end development specifically for IPFS, we fall back once again that loop of uh, Git, NPM, Git, NPM. So uh, even though IPFS is totally uh, capable of uh, doing everything natively, it, it, it still has to go there. Uh, and that we can kind of solve. We can get rid of uh, tooling, which we no longer need. and how we do it, uh, because say, <laughs> in general, uh, programming, we, we say three problems, two problems, <laughs> but naming and caching, cache invalidation, uh, to be precise, uh, has been very uh, hard problems uh, for so long, uh, as uh, far as it has become kind of meme. Uh, CID is set out to solve both of the problem, because CIDs can be treated as name, uh, concrete names, URLs, and if you have concrete names and URLs, uh, cache invalidation is not a thing anymore. And that actually circles back to HTML philosophy. That means like getting rid of things which we can get rid of. And by this, uh, using CIDs as a concrete identifier to things, uh, we can get rid of these problems. Uh, how JSPM and IPFS works is that in JSPM is basically capable of importing dependency directly from any URL, HTTP or IPFS, both. And once we have uh, basically downloaded the dependencies, uh, we do not need to actually build it until or unless we do not have a syn uh, syntax error. So if 
any front-end project uh, in general, uh, there is a chance JSX is used or several other kind of uh, build optimization need to be done. So first of all, they are not needed, but even if they are needed, they need to be done only once and deploy only once uh, because it is IPFS and everything is deduplicated. Uh, and also JSPM provides uh, pre-build uh, dependencies. So uh, this is the basically the convergence between IPFS and JSPM. And for resolving IPFS dependencies, uh, we need to use a JSPM library and this is how it works. Uh, we import it. Uh, there are several other options to configure it, uh, but this one is used so that the dependencies are resolved relative to the HTML page where things are being imported. And then we pass any CID and it will uh, basically generate the import map. Uh, I did not, okay, let's do this. So this is a demo. I'm not sure how much it will be a reflection of the things, uh, but I will show the running demo as well. So basically what this one did was uh, ran two uh, commands. One a very simple uh, dependency resolution on IPFS and another one was using React as a dependency. So if you see here, this is the same page and it is running on IPFS and it has this import map uh, generated and we can see this is generated natively from IPFS. That means that folder in which has uh, package.json, it is hosted on IPFS. There is no NPM in between and it can scan all other dependencies from there and embed it here. This is another one, but it does not have any NPM uh, dependency, just the local native IPFS dependency. Then uh, this uh, brings us to Lagom. <laughs> what is Lagom and what is the connection with uh, JSPM and so forth? So the idea is that Lagom will pick up from where JSPM left. And the exact meaning of Lagom is not too much, not too less, just the right amount. And that once again circles back to HTML philosophy that abstract away all the craft which is not needed and only let people interact with what they actually need and that provides value by some mean. It is imagined as a new kind of digital experience platform, which is a mouthful, <laughs> uh, but we can kind of reduce it to pins and pages. I think that would be quite familiar uh, in the audience here. Uh, imagine, say, we have a DAG and uh, at the root we have HTML pages and all the dependencies connected to that page, they are also part of the DAG, but then we can follow all the changes throughout the lifetime of our website uh, and just store them as DAGs, but use import maps to resolve the dependencies which is needed at that moment of time, but also kind of uh, give all other infrastructure, uh, including hosting and servers without people needing to know or understand what is IPFS, what are CIDs. Uh, so many unmaintained or deprecated libraries, people do not need to worry about them. Uh, so basically abstracting away the instability in ecosystem and providing some kind of uh, a convergence between Web3 and Web2. Uh, people want, sometimes, some authorities should take care of all their infrastructure needs, but also reap the benefit of innovations happening in decentralized space. So that is the idea, basically. Uh, like in early uh, period of web, uh, one could simply open up a text editor, create a HTML file, JavaScript, everything is interpreted, upload it, and it works no longer juggling around CI, CD, specifically for static web. Then, uh, there is more. <laughs> so if we look at this, this is a very familiar looking package.json, but these keys, uh, these are like special, and this exports key is also special. Uh, this is part of native Node.js specification. This is how it resolves. That means whenever there is a requirement uh, with this module specifier, and you resolve it based on which runtime it is specified with. So going back to this uh, here, so we could, instead of browser, we can use all of those other keys, any of those keys uh, for different, different vendors. 
because lately there has been a kind of a uh, lot of uh, innovation or a uh, lot of new uh, JavaScript run times have emerged uh, and also kind of gaining a lot of uh, popularity in, in, in audience. Uh, not in general audience, but uh, developers. So uh, these are like well-defined keys, uh, part of a uh, web interoperable com uh, community group, uh, a working group, we can say. Uh, and uh, these are uh, like say official keys, but in custom implementation, we can resolve to another one. These native keys re uh, resolutions are natively supported already in JSPM, but in Logom, what we want to do is convert these resolved URLs to CIDs. That means getting rid of, once again, something which may have uh, probability to break. Uh, that is like say resolved URLs, because this one still expects these files to be co-located with package.json, uh, but in this case, this may no longer be required. Uh, having said that, all these QRs are different, so please <laughs> scan them if you want to uh, play them uh, in real time. Although, uh, Logom is still in, uh, uh, say, not open, so please show your interest. Uh, and this brings us to concepts of pins. So, if we compare these two, here we have exports and here we have imports. Uh, this is also official Node.js package.json API, uh, but what is different here is that we can take this home, uh, prefixed by hash, we can take it as a concrete human facing value. That means if there is any human, uh, uh, human software uh, change management need to be uh, done across the system, uh, across the application, this is the value, but then we no longer need to take care of how it resolves or where it resolves. Take that and use it as a custom component. So basically, uh, we can have these CIDs on top of some custom uh, components. And from the infrastructure wise, we can resolve uh, just by if, if a user uploads an HTML page using this kind of syntax, then we can resolve these URLs and hydrate or include uh, client-side JavaScript automatically to HTML page. Obviously, this is optional and it can be done by hand as well, but uh, it is uh, good to have it inbuilt in, in some kind of service. I think I ran quite fast. <laughs> so uh, that is it. Any questions? So great stuff on the IPFS side. I just selfishly have a terrible time building JavaScript libraries. I can't figure out how to get good at it. Um, is Legome going to help me? Can I show it my JavaScript library? It'll say, fix it like this, and then I'm more eligible to participate in these builds? I'm not sure I got that question. Like, you know, if I don't get my dist right, will you give me hints to improve it? Uh, on my NPM package? Like, my yeah. NPM package currently, um, you know, the different uh, CDN hosts for making a browser compatible, mm -hmm. they don't like me, and so it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so what do I do to fix that? So, uh, great question. So when uh, JSPM builds and uploads to CDN here, so during this build process, it automatically makes it compatible to the profile it was used. So when we uh, use browser profile, and if there is no, not already, so when someone publishes, they have to use some kind of package JSON uh, where they have to define this kind of resolution. So if this resolution is all, not already specified in the package.json, JSPM kind of automatically does it for you. Uh, but there can be some uh, problems, but there is a uh, solution to that as well. So we have a custom override. If some packages don't work, we let users define their custom overrides, and then that can be resolved in turn. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I still need help making my package like that. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. That would be yeah, I guess this, this still ends up being like step one, it still needs to be NPM compatible, right? Like that that part has to still work, right? Uh, can we skip NPM? That's Absolutely. not my actual question, but yes? Yes, yes. Uh, that's the whole idea, and this is the demonstration also uh, showed. Uh, maybe I can kind of come to the source code here. So here, uh, this package, 
this is totally native to IPFS and I was able to install from this. So there is no NPM involved at all, only the conventions. That means there is need to be a directory with uh, associated package.json. But with logom, uh, I'm trying to get rid of this as well, uh, trying to use as much IPLD as possible. Uh, so my actual, which is awesome and I think partially answered your question and that is great. My actual question is, who do you see as the first uh, set of users that you're targeting? Who do you want to use this? Who do you want to come and use Lagom? Basically anyone who's comfortable in writing uh, HTML, but not so much JavaScript. And on top of it, uh, anyone who doesn't like uh, building JavaScript. Uh, I don't think there's anyone that likes building JavaScript. <laughs> so anyone, everyone basically. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Um, so basically getting rid of build step from the front end development. That's the core of the uh, So idea. theoretically you could build uh, an app that's hosted on IPFS that has a file system provided by WinFS where you author something and then publish. And so all of that stuff could happen directly in IPFS in a browser. Totally. And now you see why I was so much interested into WinFS. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so what does this mean for something like Yarn or any type of package manager that you run locally? Die kind of, maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to make sure I was on the same page. 